All right, welcome back to the Sports Renegades here on SportsDownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Stepridge. And I'm Ryan Risky. We are talking about the Cubs as they get spring training rolling. We talked about the rotation and how it kind of fares, you know, how it kind of competes in Major League Baseball with Washington and a couple other teams too. Uh, you know, teams like the the Cleveland Indians are pretty good, and of course Houston. Uh, you know, that, that's a great rotation right now. Um, so we'll we'll move over to talking about the Cubs uh, offense and um, and also the bullpen too, how they. Uh, shored that up but you know of course with the offense schwarber really looks like he got fit and uh it's primed to be the the, the starting left fielder yeah, and, I, uh, I hope he's gonna not be good. too skinny and has lost some of his strength <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah he did lose a lot of weight and uh i mean he i, I mean he looks good he i mean he, he really does good. look like he's in much better shape except that i hope he didn't lose too much strength or power. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mean, we needed he, – he was still able to get the 30 home runs last year, which is pretty remarkable considering how bad the first half of the, the, the season was for him. So, uh, you know, th- th- that was pretty good. And, of course, he walks a lot, and, um, you know, it, it, it's pretty valuable. I, I don't think he should be leading off, and uh, the Cubs don't necessarily have a true leadoff hitter at this point, but, um, you know, th- that'll be a discussion that they're going to have to have. It is. I mean, it might just be kind of by committee or depending on matchups. You know, Al Mora probably will be the leadoff guy against left-handed pitching. I, yeah. Especially towards the, you know, in the home stretch of the season last year, he really was really mashing lefties. Uh, looked good in the leadoff spot in the playoffs. Yeah, he did. He was one of the only guys that were hitting against the Dodgers. So, yeah. He was, yeah, he was, and he, you know, he had that home run in game one, and then had was having some good solid at bats and. In Game Five, the one that ended the season, so he—I don't think he had a hit except like all of his hits were like rockets that were just ended up being caught. Yeah, it's or a just good hard sign. Hit balls. Yeah, it's a good sign for sure. He's really coming into his own, and I'm glad they held on to him and didn't uh, trade him. And now I—I don't know if they tried to trade him. Maybe they did, and we don't know. But uh, I, I'm glad he's still here. I'm glad Ian Happ is still here as well because you know he's another guy that uh, is young and has a lot of power. And it can hit from both sides of the plate, which is real valuable. It, it is, and you kind of wondered if he was good. You know, you heard the rumors that they're in trade negotiations for guys like Chris Archer, Christian Yelich, and you have to figure Hap was one of the names that one of like you know that would be like one of the core pieces of those trades. I, I'm I'm sure he was. Maybe Addison Russell too. I don't know. Right? Yeah. I mean, because I mean, theoretically, I mean, honestly. I, if I was the Marlins, I would have felt b- better about a trade package centered around Ian Happ than Lewis Brinson, you know, which was kind of the headliner from the Brewers. Yeah. I know they're a little, their system's a little deeper, except for the headline guy. Like Brinson is about a year younger than Yelich, right. and look how m- more established he is. You know, this isn't like they got a you know a nineteen or twenty year old phenom that you know is tearing up in the minor leagues. He's kind of an older. Uh, minor leaguer you know some guys take longer to to develop than others you know his first stint in the big leagues last year was very uneventful yeah I I I think uh you know that was something that they were going to look at and obviously a trade just uh it never came to fruition but that's okay I mean we did get Darvish I mean we can't complain uh necessarily about it and uh yeah we were able to help uh, to hang on to to pretty much everybody so so that was good um i mean if you think about it, it the cubs good. had one of the busiest off seasons of any teams they signed yeah i mean they signed steve c shack brandon morrow re-signed brian dunsing and then in the, the rotation they signed darvish and chatwood right and you know, uh, and, and throw in drew smiley who's going to be kind of the forgotten man because he might not pitch this year due to tommy john surgery right i think the the Drew Smiley thing is very underrated, and of course he's a guy that can both, you know, he's, he's kind of like a Mike Montgomery. He can be bullpen and starter, um, you know, at certain points. And I know he's uh, started before, and uh, he's done an okay job. So yeah, they that they definitely shored up the the bullpen, and you know, a couple guys are gone now, like Hector Rondon, and it's not 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 really a big loss. He just didn't get it done last year, unfortunately. And Wade Davis isn't here, and of course he pitched really well last year, but. Uh, you know, I I think he's similar to Brandon Morrow, and they seem to like Brandon Morrow and what he did last year with the Dodgers. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, you know, I I, I guess Morrow will be the closer, and and guys like Strope and Edwards and Cechek will be setting him up. 
I mean, really. I mean, I think the bullpen, you know, it, it, even though you lose Wade Davis, they've added more depth to it. Yeah. You know, with Morrow and C-Sheck. And C-Sheck has some closing experience, so if Morrow struggles... Right, he used to close with the Marlins, right? Right, yeah. And I, yeah. yeah, and he was really good, you know, and then he got traded to the Cardinals. He, uh, I believe he he was on the Mariners last year. Um, so, I mean, they... They really did a nice job shoring up the bullpen. They knew that they needed to do that. Um, I mean, and really, you know, and also you have to throw in, you know, Dylan Maples that hopefully at some point will be ready for a, a call up if he's not on the opening day roster. You know, I'm assuming to, he would be because he he came up last year. So, I, well, I, it I also think, yeah, it depends how many pitchers they're going to go with in, yeah, out of the pen. True. I I, I don't know. Uh, did John Lackey announce his retirement? But by the way, or has he not announced that? No, yet? he hasn't. He's still <laughs> listed want, on the list of free agents. I wonder if he's gonna if he's gonna re- if I was him, I would retire. But I don't know what he's gonna do. Knowing John Lackey, he's such a competitor. He'll probably end up on some team or or uh, you know the the wait a couple months and some team that's like off to like a hot start. Like let's say a team like Seattle is off to a hot start or something, and they go out and sign John Lester to a little contract. You mean he, Lackey? Uh, yeah, John, John do you really Lackey. think Lackey would make them better though? I, I don't know. I, I'm just I'm just thinking of a team that that could maybe you know that's like a decent team that that probably needs some help pitching. Uh, no, I I don't think it would really help. If I if I was him, I would retire. But I think he's going to end up on a team at some point next year. I mean, he he's already been around. There's I mean, always he's a been demand. Like on five for, teams. There's so. always a demand for pitching. Yeah, there there always is, and uh, you know that's something that they'll have to talk about. Okay, let's move over to the White Sox. As um, the White Sox also start tomorrow, they have uh, a lot of young pieces. Of course, I think the the one signing that was really underrated was getting Wellington Castillo as their catcher. Um, he, I, I mean, ever since he left the Cubs, he turned into a pretty good player with Arizona and Baltimore. And now I mean, with the he's White hitting Sox. the ball well. His receiving skills and pitch framing were never the best. Um, you know, I mean, they pretty much feel like they've got a catcher for two years, and they were, I can't believe that they jumped at the catching market like that, because you f- feel like that they're waiting for Zach Collins, um, you know, because they were, it seemed like they were getting by with Omar Narvaez last year, and um, Kevin Smith, is that his name, the other yeah, catcher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smith. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, and they got by with that tandem last year, and... There they did that, and I think, as you said, it's kind of an underrated move because you know if he could be a guy you end up trading because he's not making a modest salary. So if a team's on the hook for it next year, you know they've got a catcher for next year at a pretty modest rate. And yeah, he, as you said, he's been hitting the ball well. Yeah, he has been. Uh, you don't think the re-signing of Miguel Gonzalez uh, was a big under the radar move? <laughs> well, well, it kind of was. I mean, I, I, I mean, that's not like a move that'll be paying big dividends. I mean, they no. might have a guy with a mid fours ERA. Yeah, and give him, give him some innings. the The real question for the White Sox is when will their young pitching come up, uh, and start to perform? Like Michael Kopech, is he going to be up this year? And Carson Fulmer and some of these other guys. Right, because I mean, theoretically, you could, you know, they'd probably like to go in the season with Giolito Lopez. Uh, Rodon and Fulmer is, you know, four guys in the rotation. I, you know, could it happen? Maybe. And then could. you got big game James there still. See, I think that's another question. When is he just going to be gone? Yeah, be, because <laughs> obviously he's he's not a part of your future. The the only, I, I mean, the uh, the team that they have right now, I mean, the infield is pretty much uh, set for now. I mean, I don't know. You know what they're going to do with a guy like Yolmer Sanchez. I don't know if he's part of their future or. I mean, he could be. Larry being, Garcia really isn't yeah. either. I would think Yolmer, you know, could end up being a good utility guy or platoon guy. Um, I don't know what you could get in a trade for him because you know he's not really established. You know, and his upside is very limited. Uh, except he performed pretty well last year. Yeah, he did, and of course, you know, Tim Anderson is there, and he'll be looking for a better season. He didn't hit the ball very well last year, but he was kind of productive, and he's a great defender, so that's always a good sign. And then Matt Davidson hopefully would stay healthy for him, and they can get a full season from him, either at third base or DH. I don't really know what his true position is, but um, I mean that 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 would be a good sign. And uh, 
They yeah. did add a few bullpen arms in the three-team trade with the Royals and Dodgers, getting Joaquin Soria and That's Luis right. Avilan. So, you know, they got, a, so, got some veteran experience in the bullpen. Yeah, this is like a big uh, transition year for the Sox, a big step, because that they have a mix of some veterans that can help the young guys, and they have a mix of some young guys, some good, some not so good. Right. This is kind of like the four, 2014 Cubs. This is the year right. where the young guys need to make the strides, come up to the big league level, get that exposure uh, to get ready for next season, for you know, for 2019, and hope that that can be the year you you know maybe get above 500. Yeah, Sox fans seem to think uh, you know 2020. You know, the, that could be the year where they start where they uh, turn the corner and start leading the AL Central maybe and go to the playoffs in 2020. I don't think it's far-fetched. I think they could do if that. If you think about really the future of the AL Central, Detroit's in a rebuild right now. Yeah, and, and the Sox are much. ahead of them. So. The Royals are going into a, what looks like could be a long rebuild. They a don't long, have, bad they don't, rebuild. The long and bad one. They don't have much in their farm system, and basically their core players all became free agents, you know, with the exception of you know a few guys. Except, I mean, that... That could be a long and painful rebuild. Yeah, because literally, they, their guys became free agents, and they just never had much in their system. You know, while they were winning, you know, they weren't developing uh, guys. Besides, could you imagine how bad they'd feel if they didn't win the World Series in 2015? I mean, all that work, and uh, you know, just like a team that that was primed to win right then and there, and if they didn't get it done against the Mets, that that would have felt horrible. Right, for and them. also remember they traded Will Myers. And Jake Odorizzi. See, oh, I know. didn't. Uh, yeah, I, I knew about Will Myers. I didn't. Yeah, that I was the realize. same. That was the same trade to get James Shields and okay. Wade Davis. I mean, it, that trade did get them a World Series. I mean, I don't think they win the World Series without Davis. Probably not. Right? Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, they did get the, except the, you know that's two players that are playing very well right now. Um, and then obviously the Twins are obviously a rising team. Um, you know, they're another team that could go after Jake Arrieta, and they'd have a nice uh, front of the rotation with Jose Barrios and, and Irvin Santana. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think when you look at it, the Sox are in pretty good shape. I mean, right. they'll be competing with Cleveland. But hey, they brought back Hector Santiago too, and he pitched very oh, well did? with the White Sox. Yeah, on a minor <laughs> league deal, he pitched well with Don Cooper. Okay, I mean, and really, when in the Indians, you know, they have they're you know they're not young. You know, they. They have some guys that are getting up there. Um, you know, when you think about the Indians, you think about guys like Kluber and Carrasco and Jason Kipnis and Edwin Encarnacion. Now, Jose Ramirez and Francis. Oh, and Francisco Lindor. Um, except, you know, right. their pitching is kind of older. You know, Kluber, I think, is, yeah, is. Tw- 29 or 30. Carrasco's around the same age. You know, Lindor and Ramirez are your real young building blocks. Yeah. So, you know, they... in three or four years, you know, we don't know what they're going to look like, you know, and they lost Brian Shaw and Carlos Santana to free agency this year. Yeah, that's right. Santana went to the Phillies, right? I, I, I mean, that's just crazy what the, the Phillies are trying to do. We'll see if... Uh, they were ta- they took advantage of the slow free agent market. Yeah, they did. I, I, I mean, I got to give them some props for that, even though, you know, they're they're not really competing, but they they have a great uh, young rookie in Reese, Hop- in Reese Hoskins, so... Uh, you know, yeah, I, I, I don't know how much of a fluke that I was, mean, but he did really well. I mean, yeah, he did do really well, and it's kind of funny because he was a first baseman. I think. I mean, he can probably play the outfield. Yeah. Um, yeah, he hit a lot of home runs. I mean, he is twenty five and was never really on like anyone's radar on these prospect lists. Sometimes it works out for sometimes you. Sometimes, like sometimes it really does. Yeah. I, I mean, who was Kyle Hendricks? Right. Who 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 was Kyle Hendricks? Some just some guy taken in a, a really late round. I don't know. Right. I mean, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure Phillies fans like he hit 18 home runs, you know, in the 36 games. I think if he maybe hit 22 or 23, 24 this season, you know, and he plays 145, 150 games, I think you'd take that. Yeah. I I think I definitely would. Uh, we're going to take a break. We will come back and we will transition into the Bears as they're about oh t- two months away from the the uh, the NFL draft and they have the eighth pick, right? Is that right? They I, do. I think they have the eighth pick. Uh, they probably will take a wide receiver, but we'll talk about all that uh, coming up next. And uh, yeah, we'll talk some Bears football next on Sports Renegade, SportsTownChicago.com.